Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 75. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was not streamed live on Twitch, but instead was recorded directly for YouTube. However, if you do want to see us record these videos live for YouTube, then feel free to check the description down below for the link. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Enaba in the description down below. All right, so we are about to take part in the, uh, I believe it's the 700 horsepower um, event. Basically, we can have up to 700 brake horsepower. It's got to be an S-Class still. We're going to be taking this, the uh, Mercedes SLR, only because... It's literally one of the coolest cars that's ever existed. Hands down, one of the coolest. So much so, I actually found something pretty cool. Um, I sort of like collecting stuff, obviously. I like collecting video games, different cool things. Um, and I have a couple of like car collectible things, like toy car stuff. And I found, completely forgot I even had them. Um, but I ha own a box of scale electrics and they are um, It's got two cars in it. It's got a Bugatti Veyron 16.4 the original Bugatti Veyron not the sort of facelifted one in I think it was either 09 or uh, 12 2012 um, but it is a scale electrics of that car plus this the McLaren SLR it's in chrome. I've obviously, I, hopefully as long as I've remembered, there is a photograph of it on the video right now. And it is one of the coolest things ever. It's There's only like 5,000, I think it was 5,500 of them were actually made. So I got a cool little collectible and I found it. It was pretty cool. Uh, we're going to be starting off with Road America, Sunset Peninsula, uh, Maple Valley, Mazda Raceway, and then the Le Mans circuit. Let's get going. That is such a beautiful angle of this car. It's stunning. This is such a visually stunning car. So one thing you might notice is uh, this car now has six gears. Even though the original, I am 95% sure, only had five. Um, I don't remember swapping in a gearbox, so that's why I'm slightly confused why there's an extra gear. Um, it might just be that in this game it has six. I don't know. Um, but another thing we've done is I've swapped in a four-wheel drive system. Haven't swapped the brakes, though, which we found out uh, literally about 30 seconds ago. The car didn't slow down. So... It definitely takes some time to slow this thing down. Corner in speed isn't great. But who cares when you've got something as cool as this? Absolutely ripping it around the track. I have to sort of remember that this is now a road car though. Because we have just come back from driving pretty much two championships with race cars oh understeered get on it is a shame that there's no active aero in this game Because the SLR has that pretty cool lip spoiler on it. This is one of the coolest Mercedes that have ever existed. Hands down, one of the coolest. What 
Such a cool sounding engine as well. bad. Look at that diffuser on the bottom of the car as well. That is literally the one thing that's producing downforce for this car, is that diffuser. Because it doesn't have a proper spoiler. It doesn't have anything on the rear, other than that small lip, but that produces minimal downforce. We know that from cars, that downforce is pretty much produced by a physical spoiler. And that has to be an at an angle to force the wind to push the car down. Like, pretty much, I think the biggest component on the front of this car that's producing downforce is probably the front windscreen. <laughs> Let's be honest. Not bad. Right, we have one more lap after this. One more lap to get a result. On the brakes, on the brakes. Ah, that thing was going wide. I love the SLR. I wanted to do it for the World Tour one, take the SLR, but I was like, I've, I've got to take it now. I've been holding it off for so long. Give me the SLR. I think as well, this car was only just S-Class as well. Um, I think it was 604 or 611. 
performance points. That was only just able to be S class. Um, so we've obviously had to do some pretty interesting upgrades to make sure that we can be in S class and also have 700 horsepower. I think we did a camshaft upgrade, which gave us about 40 horsepower. Um, an oil upgrade and something else in the engine. Uh, and then pretty much full weight saving. Um, I can't imagine if we didn't do the weight saving, this would be a tank. Uh, I think we went for a sport uh, stock tyres to street tyres. Or sports tyres. Whatever the second option is. The one before race tyres. Uh, and then extended tyres. Like, made them wider. That's pretty much what we did. We got a pretty decent amount of performance out of it now, actually. I really hope this car's in um, Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown. Can't wait for them to announce what they're actually doing with that game. Right. 20% discount on intake manifold and throttle body upgrades and 20% discount on differential upgrades. All right, here we go. I love, I love this Mercedes. It's such a beautiful car. I've got to try and get this done as soon as possible because I want to get on with editing this and get this all done by about half three. Five more laps to go. Obviously five seconds faster than last lap because that was from standing start. Out behind 4.6 seconds so we've got a nice chunk of time between us a little bit of a gap uh, so that we can somehow get this tank to go around corners bad. Looking good. Not bad. 
Zero point zero seven seconds. Seven hundredths of a second between our last lap and this lap, but we've a hundred percent lost it at that corner, so don't matter. Yeah, there you go, see? We lost about half a second. Oh! Looking good. I really got to um, see about hooking up my steering wheel in this new setup. Getting some uh, rallying in. I don't know whether this table is strong enough for a steering wheel on it though. Though to be fair, it's got an absolute tank of a PC on it and it doesn't move that much, so. Two more laps. Two more laps to go. I wonder how much G-force this thing's actually pulling. Body acceleration, there you go. Uh, 1.1 Gs. So under acceleration, it's not anything dramatic, about half a G. It's when you move into braking, that's when it starts being quite excessive. Like one G round a corner for a road car is quite impressive still. Like an old road car. Yeah, 2.1 Gs, this thing's able to pull. Quite happily, as long as I pay attention. I think if we had one or two more laps, we actually could have uh, lapped to last place. So, but there we go. Pretty good. Good result there so far. Uh, first place, 12,000 credits. I'll take it. And we now got a 20% discount on springs and dampers. Here we go, Sunset Peninsula. Whew. The way that this car just pulls off in those first few years. It's the sole reason why I went for four wheel drive. Just because the launch is really good and especially like pulling out of corners. Obviously four wheel drive does suffer from a slight bit of understeer. But the benefits of four-wheel drive straight up outweigh all of the negatives of it. Especially when you compare it to something like rear-wheel drive. Or even front-wheel drive for that matter.
not bad. Up quite a lot of speed on that um, back straight there. I know it's the main straight, but like it's the shortest straight out of the entire track. Very nice. We got two more races to do after this. What's the time? Two. Two oh seven. engine noise of the SLR is just something out of this world. Like, Mercedes no. I know, like, V8s are quite heavily American. They're a very Americanized kind of engine. Like, oh, it's got a good V8 in it. But it's just something about the Germans. When they make a V8, it's just right. You think Mercedes has been making V8s for so long and their V8s are amazing. It's a shame they're sort of phasing it out now. I just really hope that Toyota could get their head out of their ass for once and start getting hydrogen power. More mainstream to work out how to make it mainstream. Because hydrogen power can both be combustion engine as a replacement for petrol and it can be electric as a replacement of coal that produces the electricity both of them would be fueled up in exactly the same way Jesus. I'm also curious to see, um, was it the new Bugatti? Because all the new Bugattis, 
They're basically owned by the same company now. They're owned by Rimac. So Rimac is doing electric cars. But they're also going to be running Bugatti as a hybrid company now. I'm interested. We could see the next Bugatti have something like 2,000 horsepower at this rate though. Like an engine that's efficient that can produce like 800 horsepower. Along with um, motors that produce like 1,200. And what is it? The Rimac Nevera is like 1,600 horsepower. Electric only. down the back straight now for the final time and across the line very nice uh, what rewards do we get we've got 12,000 XP we've got 10% discount on valves and displacement upgrades it's always valves All right, time for what is officially my least favourite track Hands down, Laguna Seca is the worst track that has ever existed. Not bad. Very good, very nice, very good, very nice. Not bad. So far, this has actually been pretty decent. Corkscrew is very slow, though. I can't even remember. Was this actually a V8 car or was it a V10? Because I know Mercedes V10s are really rough. They sound like V8s. It's really weird. There are some strange cars out there. Because you think the uh, Lexus LFA, I believe, was a V10. But that sounded exactly like a V12. A good V12, mind you. But a V12. I think the AMG Black was a V10. That was a really nice car, the Black Edition. I think that was in, uh, came out in 2009, I want to say. Been quite some time since that car came out. Now Mercedes is just a really beige company. I kid you not, they're releasing a um, SUV. It's like an electric... It's not a G-Wagon, but it's like slightly smaller than a G-Wagon. Um, it's electric, but it looks exactly like a hearse. Like, I would not be surprised if I opened the back and there was a dead body in there. That's how terrible the car looks. And I saw it on the road, which meant someone went into a Mercedes dealership and said, I like the look of that, I'll have that. Ugh. Send shivers down my spine. If 
Five and a half seconds. Not too bad. Last lap wasn't our best lap, which is uh, a bit disappointing because our first lap, we started from a standard start. So, let's see if we can actually get a good result for this one. Shit. Shit. Not bad. We got two more laps to go. But up, 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 but up, um, but up, 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 but um, getting jiggy with it. I need to put my headphones on chat actually. Quite a lot. There we go. Go around the corner. Very nice. Alright, so we were 0 0.03 seconds faster than our fastest lap. We've got a 12 second lead as well. Come on. There you go. Much better. And that is it. We've got one more race to go now. Uh, 14,850 credits. Let's take that. 11,000 XP. Result. All right. Here we go. Final race of the day. And it's round quite possibly the... Um, It's a very mid-tier track. Not a great fan of um, the Le Mans circuit, just in general. It's a very strange one.
So this is um, actually the track where something like a Bugatti Veyron would absolutely excel. Just because of the fact that it's got straights that are long enough that you can properly speed up to them. I think this car actually came with a manual gearbox. Like, fully manual, not flappy paddles, if I'm not mistaken. But the game doesn't simulate that, apparently. Let's see how this is a very nice interior. I know this is definitely in my uh, top five cars to get in a garage. Like, if I was to have a dream garage. Bugatti Veyron. 1973 Skyline. Lamborghini Centenario. Lexus LFA. McLaren SLR. Easy. The daily driver would probably end up being the McLaren, to be honest. Um... Because it seems to be the most daily driverable car, if that's even a word. Right, halfway through the race. Two more laps to go. That Dunlop tyre is a pretty spectacular sight, though. That bridge. Is that actually a functional bridge? Yeah, it looks like it. Coming up to the uh, chicane now. Ooh, bend it. Was, uh, my YouTube guy. Great.
Right, chicane coming up again. Final time we get to drive on this. I really wish I could say ever, but I think we're going to have a couple more drives. Just a slight inkling. I think it's crazy that you can literally lock up the rear wheels of this car and it will not slide. I don't even know. Yeah, handbrake doesn't work the same in this game, actually. That's a fair shout. It doesn't actually lock the wheel. That's not ideal. So we are at 74 hours and 10 minutes that we've played of this game. Oh, it's mental. I've lost a lot of money, though. Only got 316,000 left. I'm going to have to get a bit more. Might even have to sit down and grind some credits at this rate. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out. Peace <laughs> out.